Mainline engines on the LMS are kept in good running order by the men of the motive power sheds. At stated intervals, varying with the type, engines undergo a general repair, which is carried out at the works at Crewe, Derby, Horridge or Glasgow. The average mileage period for engines of the 5X class, such as number 5605, is 120 to 130,000 miles. When it has run this distance, the engine is examined by a shed fitter who reports on its condition to the district locomotive superintendent. If the district locomotive superintendent considers a general repair necessary, he makes out a proposal which gives details of the present condition of the engine and states how long it can run before a repair becomes urgent. This proposal is sent to the shopping bureau at Euston, where records of each of the 7,678 engines are kept. The life of an engine is largely dependent on the life of its boiler. Before a decision can be made to give engine 5605 a general repair, the shopping bureau issue instructions to one of their boiler inspectors to examine her boiler. In due time, he visits the shed where the engine is ready for his inspection. Incidentally, there's quite an art in dropping into a firebox through a firehole door and even more art in telling from the sound of the hammer taps what is happening in the mysterious innards of the boiler. But the inspector knows his job, and from his examination he can make an accurate report. and the decision is made as to whether or not the engine shall have a general repair. As soon as an engine is proposed for shopping, a card bearing its number is inserted into the colour decks, which is an ingenious method of keeping tabs on engines. This card will be changed from section to section of the index until the engine is repaired and again on the road. A system of coloured signals hung on the same pegs as the cards enables the exact state of every engine which is proposed, or is in the works for any purpose, to be seen at a glance. The signals tell the order in which the engines fall due for repair, how long any engine has been out of service, and whether it is keeping up to the repair schedule. Our engine then, number 5605, Cyprus, is now agreed for repair, and at the earliest opportunity, it will be sent from its shed to the works at Crewe. Here its tender is taken off and the engine enters the erection shop. From this moment, till it is finished, all the work on it will go forward to an exact timetable. The engine is repaired on a belt system which is divided into six stages of 10 hours, 44 minutes each. The engine will go through one stripping stage and five assembly stages. At the end of each stage, the engine is moved forward one position. An engine undergoing a general repair will spend seven working days of 8 hours 35 minutes each in the erecting shop. There is no time to waste. Stripping an engine is hard and quick work. The fitters swarm over the engine. They are here, there and everywhere. Working on the motion. Perched high up on the boiler, in the pit, under the engine, on the footplate. This squad of men make the engine vanish before your eyes. But there is order in this apparent chaos. Each part that leaves the engine follows a carefully planned and timed routine. the wheels can be taken off, or rather, the engine can be taken off its wheels. First, the engine has to be lifted from the bogey. The great overhead cranes are called up and lift the engine onto another road, leaving the bogies behind on the stripping pit. While the engine is on the spare road, jacks are prepared on the stripping pit to receive it.
Then the engine is lifted again. This time, it leaves its driving wheels behind. It's craned across the shop, lowered, and comes to rest on the jacks where the work of stripping proceeds. It's a fascinating, but rather a sad sight, this swift dismantling of an engine. The locomotive which possesses such romance, such individuality while it's on the line, here becomes merely a piece of machinery to be taken to bits in the shortest possible time. But these fitters are full of pride in their job. They know that they're contributing something towards the fine service which is rendered to travelers by the railway. Many of the small parts from the engine are put into a steel tray and taken to what the works call a Bosch. In it, the trays of parts are immersed for three quarters of an hour in boiling caustic soda, so that they may be thoroughly cleaned before they're examined. The most rigorous examination is carried out on each part of the locomotive. These experts have keen eyes for the slightest flaw in the steel parts. Flaws may be revealed by a hairline of oil emerging where the part is hammered. As each of the parts of the engine is examined, the examiner marks it to show what repair work must be done before it is replaced on the engine. Certain parts, of course, have to be renewed entirely. And meantime, the stripping of our engine is finished. The time has come for it to make its first move on the belt from the stripping pit to erection stage one. The engine frames are removed from stage to stage by two overhead cranes, which are worked by expert crane men. These giant loads are moved about the shops as easily as the small parts, and are dropped into place with astonishing precision. Whenever the engine is moved, it is most important to see that the frames are properly set up and level before anything is mounted on them. Meanwhile, in other parts of the works, the repair of the parts has been proceeding. In the white metalling shops, the axle boxes and bearings are being remetalled, and the bearing surfaces machined and finished. After machining, the surfaces are burnished to a high polish. Thousands of nuts, bolts and rivets will be required during the repair of number 5605, and the smithy is constantly at work turning out these small but important details, which are put into store and drawn as required. The general repair of the engine is planned with the utmost detail. Every part of the engine is due back at the belt for assembly at a stated time, and the machine shop knows that this work must be done to time or the belt will be held up. The time that the engine enters the shop is known as zero hour. Piston due 28 hours, 45 minutes after zero hour. Piston ring. 26 hours, 45 minutes after zero hour. Reversing rod, 37 hours, 15 minutes after zero hour. Piston valves, 39 hours, 30 minutes after zero hour. The schedule is exact and its demands must be met. In the erecting shop, the fitters are hard at work on stage one of the erection of engine 5605. Various small parts have already returned from the repair shops and have been fitted but the chief work during this stage is the examination of the main frames and the reboring of the cylinders. The shop is filled with the din of riveting machines and the clang of hammers. The noise is continuous, for there are six engines on the belt alone, besides those on other belts. After 10 hours, 44 minutes, the time has come for our engine to move from stage one to stage two of the belt. Again, the crane hooks descend. Again, the engine frames are lifted, moved, and set down in their new position on the belt. Number 5605 is a standard engine of the 5X class. The boiler which is put back after the repair need not be the one that was taken off. This means that a boiler can be ready for the engine without delay. Back in the erecting shop, 
the fitters are setting and grinding the horn blocks. The work is going to time. All the parts have arrived to schedule and the fitters have been ready for them. Now it's time for the boiler to come. The schedule says that the boiler is due 27 and a quarter hours after the engine goes onto the stripping pit. The distant boiler shop is also up to time. Exactly when it is needed, the boiler arrives. Without a moment's delay, it is lowered into position on the frames, and once again, number 5605 begins to look like an engine. But there's still a great deal to be done before she's anything like an engine in the eyes of the works. It's nearly time for number 5605 to move from stage two to stage three. Charge hand is looking anxiously at his watch. The whistle shrills. Cranes arrive on the spot. Dead on time, the engine is lifted and smoothly swung to its new position. And once without a moment's delay, the fitters get to work again, whilst behind 5605, another engine takes its place on the belt. Now in the erecting shop, the familiar parts of the engine begin to arrive thick and fast. And as quickly as they arrive, they are expertly fitted. From all over the works, they come to the erecting belt, always exactly to time. The organization behind this remarkable feat is wonderful. 6,000 men scattered over 19 shops are all working on repairs and getting their jobs done to the minute. It's nearly time that number 5605 had some wheels. On the adjoining road, they are being prepared for fitting. Wheeling of this class of engine is done in two parts. The first move is onto the trailing wheels and bogies. Then the engine is lifted again and put onto the leading and intermediate driving wheels. This carries the engine forward to the last of the erection stages. Now comes that most important and delicate job, the assembly of the motion. Coupling and connecting rods are fitted, and then the valves must be set. Valve setting is an operation which must be carried out with extreme accuracy. The driving wheels are turned by rollers, and the stroke of the valves measured with micrometers and adjusted as necessary. In the assembly of the rest of the motion, too, there is need for skill and care. For on the work done during this stage will depend, to a very large extent, the successful running of the engine. Smoothly, steadily, the work of assembly goes forward. Gleaming rods enter their predestined places with a beautiful accuracy. Now, indeed, the engine is becoming her old self, but with a difference. Phoenix-like, she has risen anew from the stripping pit. She is young and powerful again, and as her assembly nears completion, she feels herself given new life, new strength. The general repair belt is ready for another move. Number 5605 is ready. Mechanically, she's almost a new engine again, fit for 130,000 more miles of hard work and willing service. This transformation has been wrought in only seven days. Slowly, she is dragged from the erecting shop to rejoin her tender, which has also been thoroughly overhauled. There is one more thing which must be done before she is fit to join her sisters on the main line, so into the paint shop she goes, 
for a beauty treatment that takes five days to complete. After the continuous din and uproar of the erecting shop, it's very peaceful here in the paint shop. The engines seem to stand with exemplary patience, proud like the noble ladies they are, while the craftsmen go about their business. So, resplendent in her livery, the engine emerges from the paint shop and after a thorough test in steam, leaves the works to take up her regular running on the main line from the motive power shed to which she is assigned. At Euston, her card is removed from the colour decks rack and officially and in fact, number 5605 goes back into service. She has been in the works for only 12 days and now she's ready to run another 130,000 miles to haul another 200,000 passengers safely and speedily upon their lawful occasion.